Welcome back to Flourish. My name is Joanne and thank you for inviting us into your family room today. Well, our topic for today is something that may be very close to home for some of you ladies. Um, do you ever feel trapped? Perhaps you're in an arranged marriage. Um, perhaps there's abuse in your marriage or maybe you're longing to be married, but you're still single or maybe you're a believing woman, you love Jesus but your husband doesn't know and you're trying to hide it from him. So you're feeling trapped. Well, whatever your situation is today in your marriage, that's what we're going to talk about. And I have a dear friend with me, Lily. Hi. Hello, Lily. <laughs> and Lily is a beautiful Iranian woman born and raised in Iran. And now she lives here in the United States and she can relate to a lot about of what we are talking about today. So Lily, tell us hello and tell us a little bit about yourself. Of course, Joanne. Thank you so much for inviting me to your program. Mm -hmm. I am thrilled to be here. I am a viewer of your program and have watched a lot of your episodes of season one and two. And I'm so glad that you're starting Aww. season three here. Um, so I um, work alongside Dr. Shariat at Iran Alive Ministries. Um, we serve together um, really Iranians that um, need to know Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we feel as though this is the opportunity for us to be able to introduce Jesus to Iranians and Farsi speaking people of the world mm -hmm. uh, through Shabake 7, which is Iran Alive Ministries yeah. Network. Wow. And you have a heart specifically for women, don't you? I do. I do. I feel like God um, has called me to really mm -hmm. be a voice in this generation to the women that have been hurt, mm -hmm. like you mentioned, abused and have gone through a lot of difficulties and hardship. Um, those were the areas that the Lord has healed me mm -hmm. personally. And I feel like because he walked me through this path, because he really strengthened me when I was weak, um, I now can really pour into the women that are going through the same mm. things I went through. Mm. That is beautiful. And you know, we learn the most from people that have walked the same journey that we have and gone before us. And then they come out on the other side, they're able to encourage us in a way that those of us who have not walked that path really can't relate to. Absolutely. So I love that, that the Lord brought you all the way to another country, but here you are beaming in via satellite into yes. the country from which you were born. Well, before we talk about this painful subject of feeling trapped in a marriage, um, let's talk about how God originally desired marriage to be. Yes. Well, first of all, um, all of us, men, women, and children, we have all been created in the image of God. Um, he told us when he made us in the very beginning of time in the garden, he told us that he made us in his image, in his likeness. So because of that, we are the crown of his glory. We carry his image as animals do not. Um, we have a soul as animals do not. So we are the crown of his creation. We are God's masterpiece. You are God's masterpiece. But unfortunately, living in the garden with Adam and Eve was the devil, the adversary. And he came to destroy everything that God created. And so unfortunately, Adam and Eve fell into the first sin. And that sin separated that relationship, that unhindered relationship that Adam and Eve had shared with God. And also, not only did it shatter their relationship with God, it shattered their relationship with each other. Yes. Because initially, God intended marriage to be some place that was safe. And he still wants it to be that way. A place where men protect their wives and they together serve God in the creation in which he placed them. That was God's original design. It's been shattered be, you know, because of the fall. Mm -hmm. But in Jesus, that can be reestablished. Mm -hmm. And that's the key. It takes Jesus to reestablish those relationships. So if you don't know Jesus, this program is for you. If you do know Jesus, we hope that you'll be encouraged today by hearing more of Lily's story. So tell us a little bit more about how you got married, Lily. Yes. Um, I, when I was 16, my parents decided that we should move from Iran. So we moved to Germany. And so um, as a teenager, I was really trying and struggling to learn the language, mm -hmm. to blend in, to really fit in with the German crowds. Um, uh, I was a teenager, as you know, a lot at, at, as a teenager, we all go through certain insecurities of our own, let alone be thrown mm, into a foreign culture. country uh, where you don't know the language, you don't know how to make friends. And 
all of that. So that was a struggle for us. So um, mm -hmm. after about a couple of years um, staying in Germany, mm -hmm. really learning the culture, which was, you know, at first we felt like it was a culture shock mm -hmm. to oh, where sure. our lifestyle had drastically changed from where, when we were in Iran and things like that. And so as soon as we got adapted and adjusted to the new country in Germany, Two years later, my dad said, I um, have started this new business venture in Austin, Texas, and I want you guys to um, come alongside me and come help me launch the business and things like that. And um, my sister and I, we both were teenagers. We're only about 18 months apart. Mm -hmm. We were like, oh my gosh, we just made friends. We don't want to move again. You know, it took us some right, time yeah. to, to just kind of ad adapt to the new uh, environment. And so anyways, um, we just, you know, moved to the U.S. and um, st um, helped him start his business. My mom was at the time still in Iran. So my older sister then um, moved to the U.S. Um, when I moved to the U.S., um, somehow um, I feel like I was um, introduced to a gentleman that was introduced to me through my dad. And so he came to, to the airport to pick me up mm. and so it was as if a marriage was already promised to him when he came and picked me up and I'm like oh my gosh who is this guy like we started talking on the phone when I was in Germany my okay, dad okay. one time um, put us on the phone he said there's this guy that's helping me start my business um, and he mm. has shown interest in getting to know you do you mind speaking with him on the phone I was like Dad, how old is he? Is he one of your friends? Um, he was like, yeah, he's about 12 years older than you, mm -hmm. but he's, you know, he really wants to get to know you. And for me as an 18 year old that got put on the phone with this guy, I was like, oh my gosh, this guy must be God, because my dad has okay. put his stamp of approval okay. on him. And so I want to get to know this guy. I want to see who he is because my dad growing up, he was very overprotective okay. um, of us kids. And, um, you know, he, he um, so we're three sisters. He had three daughters. And so he was extremely overprotective. So when he did that, I was like, I need to get to know this guy. So and you I trusted your dad. I trusted my okay. dad and his stamp of approval. Gotcha. And like at 18, you don't have enough discernment to know this is wrong. And at the same time, I have to also make mention of this. The Iranian um, fellows that are watching this would attest that this is a cultural issue. Like my dad wasn't trying to be ill um, you know, his intention was not ill. He mm -hmm. wasn't trying to set me up, even though he was in a, in a wrongful way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The culture of Iran is, it is so justifiable to arrange marriage for your kids, to, um, introduce, you know, someone who is a lot older than your daughter, for instance, um, and have them get to know each other for, for marriage. It's so, it's justifiable. It's so okay. It has become a part of life. Whereas, mm -hmm. you know, um, daughters and, um, you know, women don't even know this is, this is an issue. Being 12 years older or younger than a man would probably never work out mm -hmm. in the way God has designed it to be. Um, but a lot of people in Iran do it because of financial success, because of mm -hmm. want to guarantee a, a good future for their daughter. Like so this, their motivation is pure. It is pure, but in a wrong in way. In a wrong way. And they yeah. go about it in a wrong way, which I don't think that it is blessed in the sight of the Lord because it's just wrong. Mm -hmm. And that is also my heart. Like I hear about temporary marriages in Iran, how prevalent, mm -hmm. how rampantly right. yes. um, happening. And so that's just wrong. That's right. not blessed in the sight of the Lord. Mm -hmm. That is just not something- Not the way God intended it. And exactly not the way God intended it. And so that too, like when, when, when my dad put the two of us, like set us up to speak to one another, because it's so acceptable in his culture, he didn't know he was doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and so I didn't know because I grew up in right. that environment and you're myself. Only 18. And I was only 18. Right. 
And so anyways, we started talking and then um, when I when I arrived in Texas, he came and picked me up and I felt trapped from the get go, mm, from the beginning. I felt like, oh my gosh, I can't even go shopping by myself. I can't even go to college. As soon as I came um, to the US, I started you know, enrolling myself to continue education and things like that. Um, he would follow me everywhere mm. I went and he was just, I felt trapped. Speaking of being trapped, right. From the beginning, I felt that I was trapped in this and marriage. did you feel, Lily, that you had a way out? Or did you feel like this was the only path for you? When I was first introduced to him, and I, it, 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 I didn't. I didn't. Um, because I felt like no matter what I did, he would not leave my side. Mm -hmm. And he, the aggression was so much that I felt like if I tried to even get away from what this gentleman wanted to do, which was for us to get married. Um, he would destroy probably my dad's business, oh, who, whom he helped launch. And he, he even threatened me to say, hey, I'm the one who helped mm -hmm. your dad set up a business for himself. I'm the one who helped you guys, you know, move to the US. So if you don't want to continue on with this, all that will be destroyed. Oh, I make boy. sure that all that would be destroyed. And so as an as an 18 year old, I was torn. I was just caught in the middle, mm. did not want to go on with this marriage yet. It was my my parents life, all of our lives. At After we m migrated, everything was at, at, at stake. Yeah. And so I um, just continued on. So for 14 years, I stayed in a very abusive marriage. Um, it was just very physically, sometimes verbally, mostly emotionally, mentally abusive. Mm, I'm so sorry. Yeah. And it, it, it was it wasn't mm. good. But but mm. I can I can tell you when I came to faith two years into this marriage, um, my um, safety was the Lord, mm. was this, what, God. was when I was um, in the morning, when I would wake up and get on my knees and have my devotions, he knew that I was trapped. Mm. I knew that I was trapped. And when I would just ask God, get me out of this situation. I don't know how you're going to open up doors and ways for me to be untrapped, to, to be set free but I know you are the sovereign God. Mm -hmm. I know that whom the sun sets free is free Amen. indeed. And so we, I just kept on pressing into his presence, kept on asking mm -hmm. him, Lord, if there is a way for me to get mm -hmm. out of this situation, you're the only one who can set me free. Amen. And he did. And he did in a mighty way that no one on earth could have imagined how he got me out of that situation. Okay, I want to find out how, and I know our viewers want to know how, but before we do that, you said that God was your strength and yes. he was your security, your, your refuge. Yes. So let's flip in our Bibles. I want to read to you, friends, from God's word. God's word is where the power is. Amen. And Psalm 46 is a beautiful Psalm that I want to refer to. And, and the title of it before that says, God is our fortress, yes. which is a refuge. And it also has a little notation before we read the first verses. It's written by the sons of Korah. The sons of Korah had forefathers that were so disobedient to God that the earth actually split open and swallowed them. But these sons of Korah were righteous before God, so they were not consumed. But can you imagine they saw their loved ones consumed, literally follow, yes. swallowed up by the earth. Then there's another notation where it says that this, was, this psalm was sung according to soprano voices. What that means is that the sons of Korah assigned women to sing this psalm because so often it's women who feel trapped. Not men can too, of mm -hmm. course, but so often women feel trapped and not protected yes. by the men in our lives that are supposed to protect us, our husbands, our fathers, other male, male relatives. So it's women that are singing this psalm. Think about that. Keep mm -hmm. that in mind as we read it. The first three verses say, God is our refuge and Amen. strength, a very present help in trouble. A very present help, meaning right in the middle of the storm. God's presence is right there. And it says, therefore, we will not fear though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea. Remember, the men that wrote this saw their loved ones swallowed up and even that did not cause them to fear because God was their refuge and strength. It goes on to say, 
Though its waters roar and foam, and though the mountains tremble at its swelling, I will not fear. And then there's this word, Selah. Whenever we see that in the Bible, Selah, it means pause. Mm -hmm. Reflect on what you've read and look up, look up to God. So Lily, before you tell us how God set you free, how was he your refuge and your present help in danger? Well, his... His word was um, his staff and his rod for me. He, he comforted me. Mm. When I was um, really harshly treated, he would just draw me back to himself mm. and, um, and really reassure to me of my identity, who I am in him, regardless of whether I was stumped on, regardless of how I was treated, he reassured me that I am a daughter mm. of the Most High God. Amen. And regardless of what the situation may be, he is still sovereign and I am his daughter and he's never going to not take care of his mm. own children. That's right. So that was how he gave me the strength I needed to go on. Because also like when I came to faith, um, one of the things I've learned is that God hates divorce. Mm. And so because I always wanted to be faithful and honor God and his word, I didn't want divorce to be on my spiritual resume. And I wanted to do everything that I could to save this marriage and to help him to really be um, acting godly and, um, you know, come along, allow the Holy Spirit to change him. Mm -hmm. Um, But then a lot of times, I'm sure a lot of women that are watching, um, you're trying your best to save your marriage. You're trying your best to do everything you can in your power. And the Holy Spirit gives you strength and the grace that you need. But if the other person is unwilling to change, there isn't anything that God can do or you can do for that person. Mm -hmm. God Mm -hmm. always works with a willing spirit, with a willing vessel. If the other person is not willing, then you just leave that up to God and say, you know what, God, I did everything that I could through your power and through your grace, but this person is unwilling to Mm -hmm. change. So Mm -hmm. I give it to you. And the Lord comes and really rescues you and sets you free from the situation that you're in. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And you have a daughter. Yes, I do. And she's how old? She's 14. 14. And I know that you wanted, of course, to maintain your family relationship for her. But God redeemed you. Tell us a little bit more specifically. Yes. Um, how you came to faith in Jesus Absolutely. and how that affected your, your whole family life. Yes. Um, so when I was um, at the lowest point of my life, um, dealing with marital issues and dealing with the migrating from you know two mm-hmm. different countries to the U.S. and um, seeing my mom and dad really struggle to want to stand on their feet again and start from scratch really got me to, um, at the lowest point of my life to where I was numb to myself. Mm. I could not even understand the purpose of my life. I couldn't understand where I can find hope. Where am I headed? Like, what is this? Is there a light at the end of the tunnel mm. for me? Is it like, what am I here on earth for? Um, and so through the, a lot of the legal issues that you know, my ex ended up having to deal with my parents and so so on and so forth. I was caught in the middle of this lawsuit against my parents. Mm. Um, I couldn't even go see my parents because I was banned by the oh. by the lawyer's advice to go to my parents' house. So one day my mom called me and said, um, Lily, I really miss you. We've been away from one another. I was in Iran. You guys were spread apart Mm -hmm. from us, um, you know, just everywhere. You know, some of you were in Germany. The others were in in the U.S. Now that we're all here in one city, it's just not fair for us not to see each other. I miss you. I want to see you. We have some friends that are coming over to see you. Will you please come see me? I was like, Mom, that's just against the lawyer's advice. I can't come see you. Um, she said, can you just set all that aside? So I wanted to go see her. Um, so I, I went and I went to my parents' house. The moment I walked into my parents' house, there was this sense of peace, love, and joy that I had never experienced Mm -hmm. in the past. Uh Never. Even at the joy, at the most joyous time of our life, I had never felt such joy. 
And so as soon as I walked in, um, some of my, our friends and family, when we were really little, like maybe I was seven, I remember seeing them in Iran. And so they had moved to Oklahoma. And when they found out about um, us moving to the U.S., they came and visit us with the intention to witness to us. Wow, look at that. And so they brought Bibles with them, Jesus' film, you know, Jesus' stories and um, um, tracks and things like that. And so they came in, they had come in prayfully for all of us. And so as soon as I walked in, they were watching Jesus' film and it was at the point that they were carrying Jesus um, to crucify him. And so I started watching it, treated it as yet another religious um, mm -hmm. uh, movie that they were watching because we growing up we had we had watched so many different ones about different prophets okay. different different um, characters of Quran and so I thought well this is another one um, and so I watched it all the way to the end and um, and um, I prayed the prayer of salvation with them and so after the movie was over one of the girls said you know, um, everything will become new and you become a new creation when you come to faith. And sh um, Holy Spirit knew exactly how to use that friend to talk to me that way because right about a week prior to that event, I had secretly asked God, I said, God, I wish I had a do-over. Mm. I wish I could start fresh again. I wish I was given this opportunity to where wow. I could start all over again. And so when the moment she said, you become a new creation, everything becomes new, that grabbed wow. my attention. Look at that. I know. And uh, she started reading from John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the mm -hmm. Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And when she read that, right after I had watched the crucifixion of, of Jesus' film, it was as if the Holy Spirit just mm. revealed to me that Jesus is God. Jesus is the way to God. He is the truth. He is the way. And He is who He says He is. And He is God. Mm. And the only way that I could restore my relationship with God the Father was through Jesus Christ. Mm. That Beautiful. revelation became rhema for me mm. in an instant. I love that. So much so that the friends that were watching this transpired, could not believe that mm. in a moment of reading two verses of the Bible, I just accepted Christ in my life. I knew that I knew you that knew I knew. truth. Yeah. Oh, Lily, that is beautiful. And that extends such hope to all of you out there. Um, I want to keep reading the rest of Psalm 46, the yes. last couple of verses, verse 10 and 11. Listen how beautiful God's word is. So whatever storm you're walking through right now, just as Lily described her storm, whatever storm you're going through, remember Jesus is your anchor. Yes. An anchor is uh, something that is attached to a boat and you throw it in the water and it keeps the boat secure. So even in the midst of a storm, that boat stays still. Yes. That's who Jesus is to us. And remember, anchors are never used in calm waters. They're only used in storms. And so this, this psalm continues, in the midst of your storm, friend, listen to this, be still mm -hmm. and know that I am God. Amen. I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The yes. God of Jacob is our fortress. So whatever storm you're going through, Jesus, as he was to Lily, wants to be your refuge. Jesus wants to be the place that you run to when you're hurting. He is your anchor. Yes. He's the one that holds you calm in the midst of whatever you're struggling with. Well, Lily, one more piece of advice for our friends. What would you say to a woman who is a believer, um, but her family or maybe her husband doesn't know? And then also, so that's one question. And the second question, mm -hmm. I know our time is short, yes. but our second question would be, um, how are you going to, um, as a woman, how can you encourage other women who are still struggling in their marriages and they don't have a way of escape? Yes, no, absolutely. Great questions. I would say um, if you're struggling and um, you're a believer and you're praying for your husband, uh, keep on pressing through, keep on keeping on. The Lord hears your prayers. 
the Lord sees you where you are mm-hmm. and he will meet you where you are. Mm-hmm. Just keep on keeping on. Um, stand on the word of God because that's where our strength comes from. The Holy Spirit, our comforter, your mm-hmm. advocate mm-hmm. is right there. He's a standby right there for you, praying for you, interceding for you as you're pressing through, mm-hmm. as you're really seeking the presence of the Lord. He will come through and he will comfort you. Mm-hmm. And he also will also pray that the blind, the blinders um, to be removed from your husband or whoever Whoever it is that you're praying for, that, that their mm-hmm. understandings would open up and that they would really receive the revelation because the gospel is powerful, but it is only revealed to those that the Holy Spirit reveals to them. It, it may um, appear or it may sound complicated, like how can the gospel be? But when the Holy Spirit opens up people's understanding, they, it will become a revelation for right. them. So pray for that so that they will see it and they will mm-hmm. understand it. Mm-hmm. And if you're struggling right now, mm-hmm. I would say the Lord is near those that are brokenhearted. Right. And so he right. hears you. He sees you. Keep on asking for wisdom because when we seek for his wisdom, he will give it to That's us. Right. He promised us. Those of you that are seeking and are lacking wisdom, ask for it and I will give it to you. And I pray that you would be strengthened and you would just, um, by the grace of God, you would just go on knowing that he's on your side and you are a child of God. That's beautiful, beautiful word. So you have a verse from 2 Corinthians to encourage those of you that are believers and are not sure when is the right time to reveal that to your loved ones. This verse will encourage you. Absolutely. This is out of 2 Corinthians 1 verse um, 3 to uh, to 5. It it says, "Praise, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort who comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves received from God. Mm. And so that, actually, I switched that a little bit. Actually, that verse is going to comfort those of you that are struggling in your marriage, yes. just as you have comforted our listeners, yes. that they can comfort one another. There's another verse, the verse I was thinking of, yes. actually, that talks about that our lives are a written letter, yes. meaning um, maybe you can't tell someone you love about Jesus because you're afraid to. But when you live a life that the fruit of the spirit is flowing out of you, it's like you are writing a letter on your heart and they are able to read that letter in your life. They're able to see Jesus in your life when you live a life that is above reproach. That doesn't mean perfect, but you allowed the, allow the fruit of the Spirit yes. to shine out. And I'm sure your former husband saw that in you, Lily. He saw Christ shining in you. You said you came to faith two years after you were married. Yes. How did that influence your husband in the you know f- couple seconds we have left? Well, he also wanted to become a believer. Mm. And so um, I'm sure the Lord um, has allowed him to see the fruits of how depressed I was and how I felt hopeless, yet I was joyful mm. You know, after I came to faith. I'm sure he saw that and he wanted to also be a believer. Unfortunately, there was a lot of, you know, mental Mm -hmm. um, issues that he had to deal with, uh, with jealousy Mm -hmm. and insecurities and superstitious and things like that. But, um, you know, all that had kept him in bondage for so long, which uh, my prayer is that one day he would also Mm -hmm. meet the Lord and he would be set free from all the bondages that have kept him. Amen. Well, thank you for sharing your story, Lily. That was beautiful. We will close in prayer and then say goodbye. Jesus, we pray for our friends, those who are struggling in marriages where either it's been arranged and they didn't want it, or they're suffering from abuse, whether it's physical or mental or emotional or wherever it lands. Father, those that are in the midst of the storm, bring comfort. Those that know you, Jesus, and don't know how to share that faith with others, give them your strength. Thank you that you are our anchor. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, thank you for joining us here today. Lily, thank you. May the Lord um, keep his face shining upon you because he loves you so much. And we will see you at Flourish next time. Bye-bye. Bye.